And there the lineup for the uh, men's uh, 100. That's the uh, A100 of the two. And a strong field, interesting to see. Up in Normandy, not too far from the 2K, so not that far really from the uh, Kent coast. That time 9.86, run with a helpful wind of 1.8 metres per second, so just inside the legal limit. James Dasolu, always an exciting prospect. In all honesty, though, you don't really know quite what you get until you see it with James Dasolu. At his best, he's quite outstanding. BJ Lee of the United States, a sub-10 man. When we're talking world class in the 100 meters, it is uh, sub 10. Ben Yusuf Mete of the Ivory Coast, another sub 10 man, run this year 9.99. There is Vico. When he ran that 9.86, he was actually equaling his own European record, a record which he shares with Francis Obakwelu. The former Nigerian who holds that record or joint holds that record by virtue of the fact that he made a switch to Portugal towards the end of his career. Here is Wilfred Coffey of Ivory Coast who finished second behind Vico in that very fast race up in Normandy. He ran 10.10 uh, there so he was a long way behind, a good couple of metres adrift. 63, Alex Wilson, Swiss athlete. 10.35 man this year, has run rather quicker than that, 10.12, so he's got quite a bit of ground to make up. So the lane to watch in lane five, Jimmy Vico, fastest man in the world this year if you're watching Eurosport. Over the course of the weekend, you will have seen Usain Bolt run rather close to that. Had a meaning meeting on home territory in Kingston, Jamaica. In British sprinting terms, the headlines have been made in recent weeks by Nathaniel Mitchell Blake, who became the second fastest Britain over 200 metres, the US based sprinter, ran 19.95 at the 200. Six Britons inside, 10 seconds. The passes of them all, Linford Christie, of course. Set. The condition's a little mixed in uh, Europe at the moment. And, oh, dear. Well, Jimmy Vico hasn't heard the recall gun. Well, that's not what you want to happen. Vico has kept going, as have others. BJ Lee amongst them, also there, Richard Kilty. So what are we going to do about this? Well, in, all honesty, in all honesty, Tim, I could hear it very clearly. I'm sure you could as well, and one or two athletes too. Well, the athletes, are, you know, to be fair to the athletes, if they didn't hear it, they didn't hear it. I mean, somebody made an error in terms of the uh, officials. That is ridiculous for athletes of the calibre of Kilty and Vico to sprint the full 100 like that in anger. Completely wasted. They won't be able to do it again in two or three minutes' time, five minutes' time, that's for sure. They'll need to recover. The training weeks, months, years is about pumping everything into those 10 seconds. And Jimmy Vico there looking very, very solid, isn't he? Goodness me, there's almost shades of Maurice Green, the power he's uh, showing there. And if they were both running the full distance in anger, then well, he thrashed Kilty by three or four metres, but they must both be at the same time puzzled. But I suspect that will turn to frustration and anger. Well, there is James Dasaulu. I thought there was a bit of movement from Wilfred Coffey. So, let's just see. Well, you can't see much there, to be fair, can you? You can't in slow-mo, although it didn't look to me like they were all settled, I have to say. I thought there was almost constant movement in that slow-mo shot. Now, there's no way, I'm sure, that Kilty and uh, Vico will accept racing within the next few minutes. That would be very, very unfair. They're going to have to reschedule this. At least I think that's what would be the fairest uh, assessment and result. 
of the circumstance. What a shame. The international programme just getting underway. And, of course, we're with you for well over two hours now here in Eurosport. But that doesn't all go well. Maybe too much noise in the arena. What decision have the officials made? Now, is he calling Kilty and Vico up to the starting area in their blocks? Because I'm sure they will say, you are having a laugh. Of course, we didn't get a time for Jimmy Vico there, Martin. We don't know if he ran 9-9 or 10-3. Or what a shame. Loads of good athletics come too, with plenty of British interest this evening. The European Championships not very far away at all in Amsterdam. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge, this one, isn't it, for the organisers, because there are four or five sprinters there who will say that look, we responded to the recall gun and we want to go but the reality is where the uh, host of the meeting is concerned it is a commercial event the marquee name in this event and one of the marquee names of the night has already run 100 meters so what sort of decision will they make here well, with the European Championships three weeks away tomorrow, they get underway, of course, in Amsterdam on the Wednesday, the 6th of July. And with the uh, Rio Games gradually easing into focus about eight weeks away, every performance takes on more and more significance, and this is the last thing the athletes need. Well, Jimmy Vico, all credit to him. Looking there at the spectators and the officials, just how well wrapped up they are gives you some sort of idea that it is a chilly Tuesday evening in Switzerland. So, Jimmy Vico leading the world this year has yet to really happen to make it happen at championship level, though. Did win the European indoor title three years ago in Gothenburg. But when you are capable of running 9.86, your level of ambition is rather higher than European indoor titles. He will feel it's time on the global stage to deliver something here. European Championships next month, the Olympic Games in August. It's the men's 100 metres in Lucerne. Chilly night, bit of rain in the air. Three Britons in this men's 100. Let's go through the field. Kilty, former world indoor champion in one. Dasa Olu, reigning European champion in two. Lee of the United States in three. Meiti, Ivory Coast in four. Jimmy Vico, world number one, 9.86, is in five. Coffee of Ivory Coast is in six, Wilson of Switzerland in seven, and Edda Buren of Great Britain in eight. And this time, they do go away, and there's no problems with a false start. Let's see how Vico shapes up here. Alongside him is Mate, but Vico's running away from the field, and he takes it impressively. It was Mate of the Ivory Coast who came through for second place, a man who's broken 10 seconds already this summer, and Jimmy Vico who didn't hear the recall gun about 10 minutes ago, ran the full 100 metres that time, has done it again, and he's run 10.09 in far from the best conditions. Ignore the time to a degree, Tim. That was a decent performance from the Frenchman. Yes, it was, into a slight headwind, and uh, under the circumstances you explained, Martin, there is Vico right in the middle, all black. Has to work hard to get away from Maite, who has been in good form, sub 10 seconds this year, but that's perhaps a measure of Vico's performance there. Winning by, what, a metre and a half and going away. Kilty pretty solid over on the far side, although, what, verging on two metres down on Vico. Considering he, too, has got to be running on tired legs. A little British battle there, very tight between him and Daseolo over in lanes one and two. But Vico looks very, very relaxed there, doesn't he? I mean, goodness me. No signs of strain whatsoever. 
And if we're looking at athletes like Dasa Olu, who didn't follow after the recall gun, Kilty did. Well, you'd like to think that at this time of year they would be running rather faster than that because Jimmy Vico has beaten them and barely got into top gear. We can talk about the conditions, but the reality is athletes have to adjust and look at that. Those times outside 10.3. And, uh, well, the bar's a little higher than that these days in global 